So you yourself may be somebody who is already in technology and you wanna get yourself a job as a systems administrator or a systems engineer. So we're focusing on the systems admin, sys engineer role and some interview questions that may be common around those two roles. Now we'll mention that this is a two part video. This is part number one. We're gonna be talking about the questions themselves. And then part number two, we're gonna be answering those questions and giving you some tips around how to best answer those questions. So do check out this video and the next one. So do what you do on the socials by subscribing, clicking on the button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Now, depending on the company, depending on the scenario, depending on if there's one, two, three, four, five interviews, sometimes there may be more than just the one, they're generally gonna be a mix of behavioral and technical. How do you do this? What is this, right? Specifically around IT tech. And then there's the behavioral questions around asking around what would you do in this scenario? Or how did you respond to this thing happening? So having a good knowledge on the tech is really important, but also knowing how to phrase this tech in real life examples around how you use that, how you benefited the company or how you resolve that issue is also really good. Because for me as somebody who's interviewing somebody, I not only want to know that you know the tech, which is really, really important, but more importantly, I wanna know what you did with it. I wanna know when you had this massive outage, how did you use your skills in tech to be able to get yourself out of that issue and restore operations? So you always have those general questions around, tell me a little bit about yourself, tell me about what you know about this company, about this role that you're applying for, Tell me about why you're leaving your current company. Why don't you talk to me about your top qualities? Why don't you tell me how you manage multiple tasks and multiple projects at the same time? Here's a good one to ask, is I always like to see somebody who's got vision, somebody who has the future in mind. So where do you see yourself in the next five, in the next 10 years? I then generally just ask them a very general question. What are your top three technical skills? What are your top three technical skills that you're not very good at, but you're wanting to get better in. And a good one that I like to throw in there is, what would you do in a scenario where you are thrown into the deep end to deal with a specific technical competency and you are not technically confident in it? You are now thrown in to fix a storage area network, a SAN issue. You've never dealt with the SAN. There is nobody that you can liaise with. There is nobody that you can call you are now the expert in this. You've been given that task. Give me a bit of an overview around what you would do. Here's a bit of a doozy. Tell me about a time when you failed and what did you do? So there are a few of the behavioral ones, okay? They're generally behavioral. They're generally just creating a good foundation for me to understand how you work. Now we go into the tech specifically. So what I recommend for these is I'll ask the question around the technical component, the technical infrastructure, the technical knowledge, but it's always good if you explain to me how you use that. What, not only what it is, but what is it, what the benefits are, why you would use it, why you would not use it. So I'm gonna break this down into specific categories. Now, of course, every organization is gonna have different tech. So the questions are gonna be directed based on their tech, right? So if you're going in and you're gonna be responsible for some sort of virtualization administration, do they run VMware? Do they run Hyper-V? Do they run Citrix? Well, the questions are gonna be aimed at that specific technology. So if you're a VMware expert and you're going for a job that requires a Citrix Zen server expert, then you may struggle a little bit. The concepts are very similar, but just something to be aware of. So Windows Server, what is DNS? What is DNS used for? What are the different DNS records? How do computers on a network get an IP address? Run me through the steps if you have two servers that are having communication issues. They used to communicate, but now they can't communicate. What sort of troubleshooting would you do? Run me through your experience on server patching. Not just server patching, but even desktop laptop patching. What is the process? What are the applications that you use? What sort of scheduling? Do you have test, prod, groups? all of this sort of stuff around server patching specifically and application patching. Talk to me a little bit about AD or Active Directory. What is a domain? What is a forest? What is a domain admin? 
What is an enterprise admin? What is a domain trust? Why would I use a domain trust? So if you're gonna be asked about Windows Server and Active Directory, you're probably gonna be asked about group policies. So give me an example of three group policies that you have built and configured and what they were for. Now we can delve a lot more deep in Windows Server and in Active Directory and everything like that, but that's just a bit of a high level overview. We then move into virtualization. Now, generally in my world, I'm gonna be specializing in VMware. Most companies that I've worked in have used VMware. So I'm gonna have my virtualization questions catered to VMware. But as I said, have answers prepared around Hyper-V and around the Citrix and perhaps other virtualization technologies if the company is using those technologies. So a general question, tell me the differences between a physical and a virtual server. What is VMware? Why would I use VMware? What's an ESXi host? What's vCenter? What is vMotion? What is DRS? What's a virtual switch? If I have a physical server and I need to convert it and make it into a virtual server, how do I do that? All right, let's now move into cloud. What are the benefits of cloud over on-premise? What are the benefits of on-premise over cloud? Talk to me about the big cloud providers. Now, of course, this is gonna be catered again to the company. They could be using Amazon's AWS. They could be using the Google Cloud. They could be using Microsoft Azure. What are the differences between them? Now here they may get very specific around those technologies, depending on what sort of cloud platform they are using. So just be prepared to answer questions on any of those cloud technologies if that role is asking for that experience. Something that's really, really big nowadays is of course Microsoft 365. What is it? Why do I need it? Why is it better to have exchange in the cloud as opposed to having it on premise? We then move into some storage questions. Specifically, what's a SAN? What's a NAS? What are the differences between each of those two? And in what scenario would I use a SAN over a NAS? In what scenario would I use a NAS over a SAN? What is an SMB share? What is a LUN? Here's a good question if you are responsible for virtualization, right? Let's say VMware. How do you get a SAN to communicate with a VMware ESXi host. Run me through the process of getting it all talking to each other. If we're talking about storage, we're gonna be talking about RAID. What are the different RAID groups? Why would I use one RAID type over another RAID type? Backups, backups, backups. They're super, super important. So I'm gonna always be asking questions around backups. What's some of the backup software that you are familiar with? What are the backup strategies that you would follow? How often would you back up? What sort of backup types would you be using? Where would your backups be stored? Do they go offsite? Do they go off to the cloud? Do they go somewhere else? Give me a bit of an overview about backups for your servers. In some cases, they may need to be across network technologies, maybe responsible for network administration. So get across some of the network stuff. And it's always good anyway to understand networks well enough because it'll only benefit you as a sysadmin, sysengineer. What are the differences between a router and a switch? What's a firewall? What's an ACL? What's a patch panel used for? What is the difference between an unmanaged switch and a managed switch? What is a VLAN? What is QoS or QoS? And then I could get very specific around some other technologies and you may be prepared for some questions around Linux, around Mac OS and perhaps around some other technologies if they're specific to the company that you are working for. Now, before we finish, I will mention, yes, there is gonna be a video about the answers and that's really, really good and really, really important, but it's even better if you go and do your own research. If there are questions here that I ask that you don't know, go and research it yourself. Don't be just somebody who knows the theory, but actually go and play with it. Build your own lab. Actually go and learn the technologies yourself because then when you're in an interview, if you get a little bit of a curly question that you're not too sure about, you've actually done it yourself. So you're gonna be more confident because you've got the experience backing you up. Thanks so much for checking this out. I really appreciate it. Do what you do across the social medias by liking, commenting, subscribing, click on that face right over there. And also check out some of my other videos where we talk about all things tech. Thanks again, we'll talk to you soon.